Hello everybody, welcome to the class today. We're painting a figure in an impressionistic style today, so no fine details. It's going to be quite a fun painting. I'm really looking forward to it. Let me show you what the photo looks like, and then we'll plan it out from there. So I've got this photo on Pixabay. And it looked like a really good painting or picture for an impressionistic painting. Something that we could use nice broad brush strokes and get it painted, but it will still look good because you've got those lovely those lovely contrasts. So with impressionistic painting, the idea there is, is that you paint an impression of what you see. In other words, we're not going to be painting with any one hair brushes today. In actual fact, when I paint, I'm standing back. So let's go to here. So when I'm painting, I'm not painting like this in front of the canvas like I always do. I'm holding my brush here at the end and I'm working at, at, at full stretch. So I'll stand up and back and I'm just painting the, the, the shapes and the impressions of what I see. So it's not full details like we used to or like we usually do in the class. So if you're a patron, you can hop over to my website and you can go and download there's the, the address over there. You can go and download the reference photo. So I have tiled it out on a, on a template for you. I'm painting on a 16 by 12 inch canvas, which is basically 400 by 300 millimeters. So you can go and print out the reference photo. There's a, a PDF just with a, 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 a normal size reference and, uh, and a sketch template. To work from i think today I, i'm not going to physically sketch it out we'll just sketch it out with paint as we go along so you know i'm not going to do any sketching from my side so just a a plain old uh, canvas panel that i'm working on today so the first thing that i'm going to do is just sketch out the the figure and this little rock that he's standing on so to do that i think his main color would be like a um let's maybe just get the the photo up there let's pop that down there I think the main color on that figure because it's quite dark would be like a raw umber so i'm going to put down let's put down a fair amount of of raw umber and then i'm just going to use this plain old bristle brush what i will do however is just thin down the paint i find when i'm working with impressionistic paintings you can't have the paint too thick it's got to be able to just flow off your brush so the i'm using a nice thin medium today can you see that so that the one that i'm using is the archival oils odorless classic as long as it's a nice thin medium like that then you're good and i'll throw a fair amount of of medium in there just so that it flows nicely off the brush don't make it so thin that it's like an ink it must still have some consistency to it let's let's say maybe like a 
more like a yogurt or a mayonnaise type consistency is better. If you make it too thin too quickly, then your paint is, you can't lay other colors over it. And this is just the sketching stage, so we'll need to lay lots of colors over it. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of paint. So I think I'll just put my, my reference photo there above the, above the canvas for me to work from. So I'm just going to estimate. I can see that the, this little mound is under half of the, of the picture. So I'm going to sketch him out as best I can estimate him. And now we can start with a figure. So let's see. I'm going to look for um, angles that I can judge. So let's say there's, there's about a, a leg over there, there's another leg over there, and there's the knee. So literally just stick figure stuff at this point. And then from there we've got an arm and an arm there. There's a shoulder that's a bit more flatter than that, probably something like that. We've got a neck. And then the face is, I'm just judging it with a with a shoulder. The face comes out around sort of that vicinity there. There, there's your neck. And then from there we've got a hat. That hat is coming out something like that. The back of the head is around there. And then his hat is the top of the hat is somewhere in that vicinity. If you don't get this little sketch stage perfect, don't don't panic too much. You've got as we go, you, you're going to find you have a lot of opportunity to to improve and fine tune. And then here's a little basket that he's carrying as well. So I'm just going to estimate that in as best I can. So I can already see this basket is a little off, so I'm sure other things are also off. And that's all right. We'll fix it up as we go. Right, so let's start getting a bit more detail in these legs over here. So he's a bit broader to there, like that. Here's your... The furthest pant leg, the closer one over there. And here we've got a knee, so he comes a little bit broader, and that goes to there. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm happy with that. All right, so that should get us started. So can you see where I'm holding the brush? I'm holding it way back, and I'm physically standing at the table. <laughs> where I'm normally sitting down painting. Alright, so we've got that. That's great. Now let's go over and just start putting in almost like in a, in a blocking in shape, way or shape. We're going to put in some colors and stuff. So I think let me get a, a palette up here for us. So give me a second to rearrange everything.
Let's try it like that, and we'll see if we've got enough space for all our colors. So I can see he's got some black uh, pants, so let's maybe put some... What's this? Lamb black. I'll put some of that down. I can see some blue for that rock over there, so let's maybe put some French ultramarine down there. for his lamp and probably the skin tones the, the highlights and the skin tones and stuff we'll need some i have cadmium lemon hue and there's some orange there so we can take some orange we'll see if we need red i'm not really seeing red so We'll, 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 we won't put down any red yet. Then there is a ton of green, but I don't think we're going to use it right now. So let's leave that. And obviously we always need white. So I'm going to put down a, a nice big dollop of white. And that should get us started with the with the colors. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put down just a good blob of, of medium down there for now that I can just dip into. That way I can just, if I need to thin, let's say a black, then I can take the black and just steal a little bit of the, the medium over there. And that'll hopefully help us a little bit to, to not have to mix all this stuff in. His body is looking a little bit short there, right? Eh? What I'll do is just, uh, I'll do that. That'll extend his body. Like I say, it's not a, it's not critical. As you go along, you're going to find that you'll be able to adjust stuff. All right. So for now, what I'm going to do is just put down these shapes. over there. Yeah, that's a bit of length for his body, huh? Just by bringing it down a bit. There's that leg over there. There's a bit of a leg over there too for this far furthest leg. And this hand comes out over there, and then we have our our lamp sitting over there. All right, so let's maybe take. I don't think I'm bother the bother cleaning the brush. Pick up some lamp black. And let's see that. Paint leg seems to be around there somewhere. Then it comes out around here. And then part way up his body. Because you see, I can now I I estimate where the arm is. 
and it comes down to roughly the edge of the of that little basket that he's that he's got. So there's that. Oh, that's all the black I'm seeing. So for now, I'm going to wash the brush. Just dry it off. So I've got a a cloth, just a, an old T-shirt, which I'm just using to soak up that that turps when I'm done with it. All right. So his body's got just a little bit of a. A bluish tinge to it. I think what's happening is you've got um, a bit of moonlight shining on the scene. So I'll bring in a little bit of ultramarine and a bit of white and that should give us that base highlight body color that we're seeing around here. Now, notice when I'm putting it down, I'm just putting it down in just marks and stripes. I'm not going to do any shadings or anything like that. Here at the back, it's really dark, so I think I'm going to solidify this over here like that. You don't want to be putting colors down and fading them into each other, unless you really have to. I'm also seeing some of that bluey gray highlight color around this vicinity here. I could possibly, I'm sure we'll add a bit of yellow into it eventually. down there and then it's definitely some lighter colors over there his arm is surprisingly dark you would have expected there to be a little bit of a little bit of color happening there right eh? let's define that arm with a with a black Every time I use the black, I'm going to have to wash my brush because his black is notoriously strong. So he's going to overtake whatever other color you've got. All right, now let's start getting some of those lovely, uh, those lovely yellowy orangey colors that we're seeing in the in the skin. There, so I'm going to take some yellow, some orange, some white, and can you see today? I'm not mixing any any colors. I'm just doing all little impromptu mixes on the palette as I go along. Stealing a bit of medium, popping it in there, and that's great. Okay, let's start with that. It's quite, a, quite an orangey color. So it's got raw umber, orange, yellow, and white in it. And let's see, we've got... Down there by the arm, in that vicinity around there. We've got some over here on the knee. We've got some here on the front of the face, in that vicinity around there. And then it darkens up, so let's maybe go to some Umber. And then there's hair. So let's go raw umber and black. For that hair and stuff on the back of the face. I'm not going to worry about the ear. We'll put that in separately. That's quite dark down the back of his neck as well. Alrighty, we're starting to see a figure already, so that's cool. So for now, I think that's enough information 
on the figure we're happy with our shape so at, at this point you can still easily move stuff around so i think i'm going to take some white some blue bring them into each other get some medium in there It's literally just French ultramarine and white. Not too bright. Just sort of a mid-tone. And let's just start getting this in over here so that we can we can know what's going on there. Obviously his shape isn't particularly important. All right, so now we've got it's darker here and it goes lighter to there. So we're going to have to do a shading, but we've got to do that shading without shading. <laughs> so we're going to, I'll, I'll just take neat French ultramarine and I'm just going to put it down here in, in dabs and blobs. And we'll see how it goes. I think that's probably not dark enough, but it's a, it's a good it's a good start. So let's maybe take some some black, and we'll just work that into it, just in dabs and taps like this. So on that edge there, there is a bit of reflected light, so we'll leave that at that. And now, as we come out of here, we've got to gradually start lightening this up. So I'll just add more white to whatever's on my brush. So now as you're standing back, it, it becomes easier for you to just judge your your textures and your tonal values and so on. So if you if you need to stand back every now and again, All right? So I do want to put a nice little highlight on you, a nice little bit of reflected light and so on. So I'm going to just take this white that's there. It's got a little bit of blue in it from me grabbing it. So I'll take that. And let's put it down over here. If it's not going on, it just means your paint isn't thin enough. Bring more, bring more medium into it. There we go. All just dabs and dashes. Yeah, I think that's that's good enough there for now. All right, so that's the blocking phase for the figure. All done and dusted. So by rights, you could now go over and and do the and do the background, block that in as well. I think I'm going to continue adding a little bit more info to the figure because he's quite big, and then we'll just squeeze the the background in around it afterwards so now i'm going to go over to a smaller brush so where we started off with a, a bristle let's put him over there a bristle brush that size now i'm going to go over just to a full bit like this size but as before i'm, I'm holding him here at the back we still don't want to add too much information you want to try and get away with adding as little information as what you can all right so i'm highlighting this little highlight color by adding more yellow and more white into it And 
Now let's just lighten up that front of the face a bit more. Like that. And let's maybe get that ear in there as well. So I'm judging the ear. I can see the nose is sort of in that vicinity. So the ear goes from the nose. It's sort of between the eyes and the nose. Just so you get it at a more or less the right place. And that's good enough. Alright, the hat, the bottom of the hat is also picking up quite a bit of, quite a bit of light, but it's not quite that face color. So I'm going to do this, mix that face color that I've got into a bit of, of the raw umber. I think it can pro probably do with a bit more orange, actually. Put a bit more orange in there just to get that. You want to get that sort of reflected light effect then here at the back. It comes around there like that. Because we haven't got our background in, it's not easy for me to, to go and adjust stuff. Because I can always push things back in with the with the background, or I can push it out now because there's no background to to push into. Right, so for the top of that hat, it seems to be quite a, a grayish kind of color. So I'm going to take some ultramarine white and a, just a touch of the black. And if you haven't got the black, you can always make your own. Just take your ultramarine and your raw umber, mix them together, 50-50. And that should give you a Payne's Grey. Okay, so we've got that, the ridge of the hat is running around here somewhere. And then the top of that, the peak of the hat is somewhere there. So let's see, he's darker over here. Can you see I've just literally put that color down, but now I need to go over to a lighter color. So I'm going to just get rid of that excess off there. I don't need to wash the brush because it's still just variations of the same color. And that color that I'm seeing on that highlight on the hat seems to be, it's a bluey color. And that seems to be this color that I've got over here. So I'll pop him down over there. Maybe just broaden him ever so slightly over there like that. And it does seem to be running along the edge of the hat there as well. Somewhere there like that. And then in here, here by his forehead, it seems to be quite, quite orangey. So we'll get that in over there. That should be fine. Okay, now let's get some black in there for that. The back of the head again, the hair where the hair is. The face itself, I think, can probably do with a bit more, bit more orange in it. Let's liven that up a bit more by warming it up. We want to get that nice that warm glow from the from the light 
in the face. Now, I'm not going to try and get any detail in that face. None whatsoever. They would defeat the object. All right, so now that we've got a nice warm glow color, let's add it to that arm as well. What you can see now is that I'm gradually able to now start refining these shapes a bit better because now I've got a better idea of what it looks like and what goes where the back of the arm is darker so let's just get that in over there like that And they will need a bit of an in-between color. So let's take raw umber, maybe some orange, touch yellow, because his arm is round. So we've just got that in-between color over there. Got a little bit of this glow here on his stomach. I'll bring that in. And then we've also got some of that glow here by the knee. So now the smaller the smaller brush is helping us get that that detail goes along there let's show the back of the leg is darker like that And here we've got a foot, but that foot is now in highlights. So let's do the highlight color. Then I'm seeing like little marks here on the, maybe he's got a belt or something on. Little highlights. They seem to be blue. So let's see, we've got one around here, around here, and around there. I'm also seeing just one or two little folds and things here in the pants. So I'm just going to add a few little dabs and dashes to, to indicate that. <laughs> it does look like he's got a goatee at the moment, eh? <laughs> You're right, Tracy. <laughs> All right, let's see. I think we've got enough info there, so I'm going to leave that at that. He's probably pretty close to finished. See, you, you've got little things like this, like there's a little highlight on the top of the arm and stuff, but it doesn't help you put that in now because you're going to still get the background in. So now I'm going to go over and let's tackle that. It's quite dark. So let's get the shape of this little basket in there. Yeah, 
Is mine looking identical? No. Is it looking similar? Yes. And that's all. That's that's what's important. As long as you get the look similar, then, then you're okay. You could, of course, now go and sit down and, and fiddle until you get it all 100%, but we're painting impressionistic today. So you don't want to be sweating the small stuff like that. We're creating the impression of this figure. Okay, so there's your, your shape. That can come up slightly just to get it a little bit more symmetrical. And then there's a nice little highlight that seems to be like a grass um, basket. I think he's definitely busy catching frogs tonight. So let's take some orange. We'll work it into the raw umber there. Maybe just a tiny touch of white. Just to get a, a brownie. Yeah, it looks similar. All right, so there's a little highlight there on the mouth of that mask basket. There's some over here and around there. So I'm going to wash the brush because I see there's also like a bit of a moonlight reflection on the back over there, which which is now blue. So I'm picking up a bit of the blue. Not quite light enough. It's not visible. Here, like that. Then he's also got a bit of a um, a string that goes over his shoulders and stuff like that. So I think we can we can leave that right till the end. Just want to bring a little bit more. The color isn't quite solid enough here yet. Here, like that. There's a little gap where the green is actually shining through, which we'll bring in afterwards. All right, now let's tackle that that beautiful lantern. So for that, we'll take some neat white. Let's see, that white seems to be around here somewhere. Because he's got his hand and a bit of black. So you've got your white there. Then around it, we've got some yellow. like a glow probably something like that and then there's some orange so can you see I'm just picking up these colors and that glow seems to be in that vicinity there All right, so let's work on that shape. The shape is not quite right, eh? So that needs to go a little bit higher. So I'm not judging by, by his face and his body and so on, where all these things are. Now, just be super careful. Never go back into that white bit. Because if you touch that white bit with any color, it's gone and you're not getting it back. So I'm carefully popping a little bit of yellow underneath there. And that sort of indicated a flame, eh? 
All right, now we can take some black. And let's see, he's got a, a base. Somewhere there like that. And then a top bit. Somewhere there like that. And now you've got these little bits that are coming down. There's that guy. Coming in somewhere there like that. There's a little piece coming in at the back around there. And then you've got finer goodies coming out in front of it, like the little handle and so on. So that's fine for that. I'll wash the brush. And then there are some little bits of moonlight reflecting off of that. So I'm going to take some white again into some blue. And let's see. here just on this edge over there like that if someone on that edge over there like that yeah i think that's good enough for there for now Alrighty, let's start getting that background in. So for that, I think I'm going to use a new, um, a new palette. Because this palette is pretty full now. And that's why I don't have to worry about trying to avoid all these colors, because they, they are still quite vibrant. And we'll probably need some of them again as we tie everything together at the end of the day so i'll just put that that tile to one side all right let's take a look i've got lots of green in that background eh? i'm going to put the 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 reference for this background quite small in the corner something like that so there's not a lot of information there is there all right so let's get some sap green down there this probably need a a pretty fair amount of that. And then we need to lighten it up. I'm seeing like bluey kind of color. So again, some more moonlight and stuff that's reflecting inside that. Off the plants and stuff. So that would need blue and white. So let's get those guys down there. And then there's some really dark bits as well. So I'll pop down some lamb black. And then there's lighter greens. So we'd need to lighten that up. So for that I'll use some cadmium lemon. You could use cadmium yellow as well. That would be fine. Okay, so it's quite a complex background. Can you see that? There's lots of little things. But I think we can break it down into simple, more simple shapes. Because that's, that's what we're doing when we're painting Impressionistic. We, we're breaking things down 
into its basic components. So can you see here at the top, there's like sort of a strip, here's a strip, there's a strip, and then there's a, maybe a dark bush or something. This is clearly a rice paddy, hey? So we've got one, two, sort of three strips going along there. So that's basically what we're going to do now. We're going to put down those, those three strips. And then from there, we'll add some information. So that top one is quite dark. So let's start with just just some neat sap green and let's see what it looks like. We'll see if you need some other darker bits. Right, so I'm estimating that is roughly around this vicinity here. So can you see the nice big brush that I'm using now? Yeah, it's a little bit it's a little bit bright that color. So let's bring in some some black into that. So that we can dull this color down. Yeah, that's better. Now it's a nice dull a dull green over there. And so here we're gonna have to just work carefully around our figure. We'll come in here with a smaller brush just to get that that edging right. So Daniel is asking an interesting question. Is saying is uh, realism out and this in? No, no. Everything is in. Everything's always in. <laughs> you paint the way you want to paint. If if this is what interests you, this this style, then then go for it. Paint in this style. All right. So before we go ahead, let's start with the next strip. So let's get the colors for that. So I'm seeing a little bit more, I am seeing a few darks, but it's not too many. I'm looking at that majority color, which has got a bit of, bit of a brighter look to it. So there's definitely some yellow in there, and there's definitely some white in there. So I, I need a decent amount of it. So I'm literally just mixing it like that. Don't make it too bright. We still want to be able to add highlights and stuff onto this. Painting impressionistic like this is fun. All right, so I'm, I'm judging this band over here. It's roughly in this vicinity here. Painting impressionistic like this is great for just loosening up you'll often find that you well me personally I, I like painting in, in detail you get so bogged down that you you forget to just see the bigger picture some days you get so bogged down in the details so I like to do like an impressionistic painting every now and again because it, it it forces you to stand back Uh, 
and forget about all those details. Alright, so I'm just bringing these colors roughly next to each other. We'll use the smaller brush to to edge everything off. And I promise you, the, the way I'm painting Impressionistic here today, for a lot of people, this is still going to be more detail than, than what they would paint when they're painting Impressionistic. And that's fine. Right, let's go back to a smaller brush. And now, just for a few minutes, I am just going to sit down and just get these outlines right. Oh, there's a hand that we that, that we haven't got in yet. So I'll just leave a little bit of a gap for him there. So can you see mine is not perfect? Um, the shapes and stuff is not perfect. But it's close enough. It's, it's giving you that that image of, of the of the figure. In the end of the day, the painting and your reference photo are never going to hang next to each other on the wall, right? So as long as what you've painted when you stand back looks right, then you're A for away. Okay, let's get this into there. So this is literally the most kind of detail that, you, that you're going to go for. In a painting like this, is this few minutes of edging. There's a little bit of grass sticking out there. So can you see? I'm, I'm now I'm, I'm literally using a smaller brush for a for a minute, and there was a little bit over here. There was just a tiny touch of of a gap between the stomach and the and the arm there okay here's also still an, a hand that needs to come out over there so I'll leave that gap open Okay, so that's enough of that blocked in. Let's do the, the bottom row. So here we've got those lovely bright grasses. We can't paint that because otherwise it leaves us nothing to highlight. So we're going to paint something that's a bit darker. So I think I'm going to go for, let's bring a bit more black and a bit more um, of the sap green in there. Just get a, a bit more medium. My dropper is empty now. And let's rather put too dark a color down. 
maybe just a little bit of white in there so it's not quite as dark as that that top one there for now all right let's block this in over here now nice and quick Alrighty, <laughs> that looks like some other country's flag now. Eh? <laughs> Let's start adding a bit of detail into the. So now we can we we we'd sort of I think we no we're not done with that. How about those little black patches and stuff? We forgot about them. So we've got some over here. So now I'm standing back again. There's a bit of black in that vicinity over there. Yeah, there's a bit of a a line of something over there. I don't know what it is, so I had a bit of a line there. And there's some darkness over here too. There and here. All this over here is all, all dark. So I'll pop that in. Alright, now we can go over to a smaller brush again. So let's use this guy that we used in the beginning. We'll start at the top and we'll just work our way down. So the highlight in that area seems to be this one's dark color. So I'll just nick some of this that's that's on the that's on the palette already. And let's see. So back to holding here at the way, way far back again. And I'm just gonna use little dabs and dashes like this i can see there's some some other plant happening in this vicinity over here so i'm just going to dab and dash that in while my my brush is quite dirty there's some lower contrast ones at this vicinity around here Okay, then there's a few little brighter guys. So remember, you're not painting detail now. You have to just paint the impressions. So I'm going to bring some of these impressions right up against the hat. So that the, the background looks like it's going in behind the hat. Yeah, I can see some plants happening around here. Alrighty, moving down over here. There's some darks. We've got those guys over there. There's some darks happening around here. And around here. Something like that. There's some darks here behind the figure. And all the way to there. little dark bits around here as well then there's like it's quite gray so 
I'm going to take some blue and some white and just whatever's on the on the brush at the moment. So these lessons happen every week, same time, same place. Right, so I'm seeing some some random shapes around this vicinity around here. So I'm just using a really light dab and tap on the brush. Let's break that perfect line over there. We don't want a perfect line. And you can turn the brush as you do this as well. To give you different um, shapes. There's a bit of that around here too. Something running down there, and here some other little plants and goodies over there. Let's break that edge. Alright, over here, again, there's some more like a bluey kind of stuff. I'm assuming it's just like grasses and stuff. So now I think I'm going to finish with that brush and go over to a, a smaller one now. Because now we're coming here into the foreground. So we do want to show just the impression of a little bit more detail. So let's go over to, to this guy again. Okay, so here we've got more grasses, which are brighter. So maybe I can take that and just add quite a bit more yellow into it. You can see there's lots of paint, real lot of paint. And I'm just going to use like squiggles. Just get some of that in over there, get some in over here. And just gradually work our way down. So this is really rough at the moment. But remember this, we do gradually add more and more detail into it. What I'm trying to do is just get away from that initial white or, or that solid color that you've blocked in. Not white, the initial solid color. Just so that you've got something some information there and not just plain 
And that's what we're adding there now. All right, so I'm going to wash the brush. And I'm just going to go back to the figure for a second. So I'm just going to grab this and just hold it in my hand because we've just got a few little goodies to put in. For example, we've got his hand over there. He's got a hand over there. It's got a nice colour. I like that one. I think I'll, I'll use that to add an extra little highlight in this vicinity. And now we can add these little details in that we couldn't before. Because our background wasn't painted in yet. That there still looks a bit skinny, eh? So I'm going to take a bit of raw umber and just. Oh, you know what is missing? Is actually he's got a a nice dark. The 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 the, sh the cast shadow over there on that back is not in yet. So use a bit of black there, and then some raw umber. And there's actually a bit of a bit of the other legs calf also standing out there but I'm not going to add that in it doesn't fit with mine yeah that's looking better No, his leg's not so skinny anymore. And here we've got a hand, but that hand is quite dark. Let's see what's next. How about a nice little highlight there on the, the tip of the hat. So for that I'm using white with just a little bit of blue in it.
everybody. So there is like a... He's got that... string that's coming from here down to the basket and then it's also coming then from around his shoulder back there to the other side of the basket so we can put that in Now I'm going to go over to a rigger brush and let's see, let's pick up a bit of painting medium and some black, just so that we can get this paint, the, the, the black, nice and thin. Maybe even add just a bit more medium down there. This needs to be thin as an ink. I'm going to add just that little bit of detail down there. Then you've got that little bit of a handle around there. Just to shape that off. All right, so hopefully our background has it had a chance now to to dry off or just to firm up a little bit. Let's just work on a nice little brighter green over here. Let's just see if we can get a few more details in here. Ideally, this would now dry a bit because it is quite, it's quite wet. But I'm going to do my best. So I'm just using dabs and taps like this just to get some, an impression of some grasses. few little longer ones and some shorter ones and so on. Okay, so those guys at the back, they're actually a bit more in, in shadow and stuff, eh? Because here's all your light in, in this area here. Okay, so over there, be careful to not go over the over the stone. Okay, so can you see how I'm just dabs and dashes and stuff is just adding a bit more of a that shorter grass look over here. Okay, that paint is now starting to get a bit too too dirty. So I'm gonna wash my brush. I 
let's see. Let's maybe take some of this. Let's just add some little other smaller details in in this back area over here. I don't want to go too too crazy in the back area, simply because you've got lots of detail in front of the back. You want to keep it quite plain. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty fine as, as far as that's concerned. Let's get some of this right up here against the to show that it's going behind the the lantern. Okay, let's wash the brush and let's take some neat yellow. I'm even going to put a bit of white in it. And now this I'm going to make nice and Nice and thin because there's lots of other thin paint on the canvas here already. And now I'm going to go to a smaller brush. So it's just like a little fine round. And I'm going to just try and add some details in here. Just the impression that some of these grasses that are here are catching some of that light as well. Just in this area here in front of the in front of the boy. It'll be just like those tips of the of the grasses that are being illuminated. <laughs> just shows you how thin the paint is. <laughs> we'll have to make that oopsie blob just uh, into a happy accident. And uh, these these highlights just fade away into here as that as you move away from the light cast by that lantern just gets less and less and less brush is getting a bit dirty so i'm giving him a wash again pick up some of the clean ones i can get some over here as well right here by in front of him some of these grasses also are going to need Some of that lovely reflecting light. And can you see how it's just livening up the whole painting? Take a bit of orange. 
just a tiny of that into that yellow as well just to get an orange glow as well Not too much of this, just a little bit. It just gives you that, you know, the, 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 the candle inside there or the light inside there is flickering. So you get those little lighter, uh, actually warmer and, and darker, warmer and colder flame bits. And, and that gives you that flickering effect. We've got the white is hot, the yellow is cooler, and the orange is even cooler. Washing the brush again. And I'm going to take a bit of the yellow and just get some of this reflecting off the, the rock as well. So just a few little dabs and dashes. Be careful you don't end up shading them, just dabs and dashes, just like that. So don't go over the same spot too often. Just like that. Touch the yellow on the edge of the face, just like there by the nose, or the mouth area. Maybe a touch there on the ear. Then he's also got these sticks. I'm assuming that's for spearing the the frogs. So let's thin down some black. I suppose you could use your amber as well. And let's add them in. So they go from there to there. Come out over here. Just little quick jabs. There's some over there through his hand and out over here. So I'm just using little flicks. Get it quite full over here. And then a few little flicks as we go out over there. That should be enough. And some of them are catching a highlight. So we need to take some white and some blue. So all of that is now really quite really quite wet so i think i'll just take a bit of painting medium over there and a rigger brush quite a bit of white get it nice and thin And just one or two little little highlights on that. Not too many. Not too many. And over here. Damn, so we did use the rigger brush after all. <laughs> Right, I think this, yeah, it just needs a little bit more yellow. It just seems to stop a little bit too, too soon. Yeah, there we go. This paint is now starting to just firm up a little bit. It's not so, so soft anymore. There we go. There we go. Just a little to stop that hard edge that was over there.
yeah, I'm happy with that. If I had to get really full of nonsense, then I would uh, just adjust the back of the hat a little bit. But I think I'm going to leave it at that. That is close enough. Yeah, I think we'll call it a day on this guy. So can you see we've got the impression of lots of detail, but there's no real detail there. Sadly, we had to use the. I, I suppose I could have, I, I could have used this if I really wanted to, but that's fine. The touch of rigor brush is not the end of the world, eh? <laughs> Alrighty, let's go to there. Yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that class. I had lots of fun. Good luck with yours. I'll see you next time. Guys, in the live class, if you've still got some uh, some questions and stuff, fire away. I'm happy to answer them. I'll hang around for a, for a bunch of minutes. I think we've got a nice light effect. You can possibly still put a little bit more yellow reflecting just in this area over here. Maybe just a little. But those are the kind of things that you, you you sort of see when you when you stand back. Yeah, there, there we go. Just that little bit of three or four dashes. Just fills up that last little bit of missing light. I think it warms up the it warms up that little area in the on the by the focal point quite nicely. Barry, this would absolutely work with acrylics. What would be a bargain there is then you could leave your background to to dry those initial three strips. And then you can come back with the, the detail stuff. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, good luck. Good luck with your painting. So if you did enjoy the class, you can go and uh, take a look on the website. Um, I put the edited version of the class up there, along with... The PDF that you can go and download, which has the reference photo, the sketch template, the final artwork, and the tiled templates and so on as well. Plus, there's more than 500 extra classes that are available over there that are available nowhere else. Then, obviously, if you uh, haven't done so yet, please, uh, please do that. Then I can let you know when I've got new classes for you. I do a, a live class every week. Same time, same place. Ha, ah, Louisa. I said I, I think I'll be able to get you to bed before 12. And it's only half past 11. <laughs> Camelish is saying you could try it with gouache. Yeah, go for it. Why not? It'll work as well. All of my classes that I do in oils, you can follow in acrylics as well. Honestly, the, the, the only real major difference that you're going to do is where I'm adding medium into the oil paint, you're adding water to your acrylic. And by the same token, when I'm teaching you an acrylic class, you can follow along in oils as well. Because the techniques that you're actually painting with are 99,9% .9 the same.
Can you use walnut oil as a medium? You absolutely can. I know a lot of people do that, Tracy. I haven't used it before, so I can't tell you with, with confidence. I can just tell you from my experience that I know other people do use it. I like to use the painting medium and not just the oil. I do sometimes use just neat linseed oil to, to thin my paints with. Um, and that's if I want to not shorten the drying time. Then I'll mix the, the linseed oil into it. But I like to use the painting medium because it's got a varnish in it and it's got a drying agent in it, which is a bit of alkyd, um, alkyd oil or whatever alkyd is, <laughs> which, which speeds up the drying process. I think alkyd is a resin, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> So that helps to, the like this this painting that I've done now, it's going to take three or four days. Then then he's dry because of that alkyd medium inside the medium, the alkyd resin inside the medium. Alrighty guys, so I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. You have yourself a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next time. Same, same time, same place. We're going to be doing a drawing. Um, I think we're drawing mountains next week as we're busy with our series on drawing a drawing landscapes. It's going to be great fun. I'll see you then.